Welcome to the Cacao Canteen, a home tiki bar in Columbus, Ohio. Over the past few months, I've started integrating various lighting, sound, and video effects that occur when certain drinks are ordered off the menu. One of those additions came in the form of a Lightform LFC, which really helped bring my effects to the next level. Something that challenged me for months though, was finding a way to automate the multiple systems at once, bringing my approach down from five different triggers to just one. This was done thanks to Amazon Echo routines and Tasker on my Android. This video will cover how the effects in the canteen are currently being pulled off, showcasing how Lightform can work in tandem with other home automation systems to create a really cool light and projection show without the need for super expensive tools or equipment. The approach is a little involved, but I promise there's a logic to it, and if you stick with me, it all makes sense at the end. One caveat to note though, I can only say for certain that this works on Android due to its use of app widgets and Tasker. This is not to say that these approaches won't work with other similar apps on iPhone, but it is definitely something to keep in mind. We'll first quickly cover the non-lightform effects and how they were created. First up is creating the show audio, which will inform the timing of everything else you create. This can be done in any audio editor of your choice. For the example effect today, I will be using the audio for my Mara's eye effect. Once you're happy with it, upload the file to your phone. Next up, the lights. To create an animated light show, I employed an app called Hue Pro, which lets you control Philips Hue bulbs down to the millisecond. For example, I could control these lights to change from white to green over the span of three seconds, then move them back to white after five. This is just a simple example, but there are limitless possibilities to the shows you can create. Ideally, you will sync these up to the audio you created. Here's the show I created for Mara's Eye, which is synced up to the effect audio. Once you're happy with your light show and have given it a name, create a blank page on your Android, then add a Hue Pro widget for this effect. This will come into play later. For the fake window, I'm utilizing a Raspberry Pi, which is hooked up to a TV mounted on the other side of the wall. It's being controlled by an app called Rasp Controller. The video itself, which I created in After Effects, plays on the Pi with VLC. It starts with two hours of video with nothing going on. At the end of the video though, there are three effects, also timed up with their respective effect audio. In Rasp Controller, I created custom commands that seek to a certain percentage of the video. To find those percentages, I took the starting frame number of each effect, then divided it by the total number of frames in the video. So, for example, if Mara's effect starts at this frame number in a video with this many frames total, it would begin at 99.592%. You can mess with the amount of decimal points to better refine this. So, for Mara's video, you'd create this command for VLC inside of Rasp Controller. Once the video ends, you'll want to return to the general loop. To do this, create the same command, but seek to 0% to return to the beginning of the video. As we did with Hue Pro, use Rasp Controller widgets to add shortcuts to these commands. Next, we have the Lightform effects. My Lightform effects were all created from scratch in After Effects. In my Lightform Creator project file, I've uploaded the file into slide one. Even though we're only showcasing one effect here, since it will come into play later, I have another effect in the project file for slide two. Lastly, we have the Amazon Echo Routines, which are created in the Alexa app. All my audio is actually coming through a hidden Amazon Echo dot hidden behind the radio here, so it made a lot of sense to try to employ routines to control certain devices in the canteen. For example, any lights that I didn't animate in Hue Pro can change their color, Things like the chandelier are hooked up to smart outlets that can turn off and on. The only caveat and limitation I've noticed is that when you're timing these out, Amazon only lets you space things out in increments of five seconds. These routines are how I was able to tie in the Lightform projections by using if this, then that, or IFTTT, ift. So you'll want to download that app, create an account, and once done, we're going to create three ift triggers that utilize the Lightform. The first trigger is to set the slide index. In the if app, create an applet, then under if this, select Alexa, then scroll down to say a specific phrase. 
In our case, we'll make this Prep Mara and continue. Under Then That, search for Lightform Cloud. Then from this list, choose Select Slide Index. Now, remember earlier when I showed that I had two slides inside Lightform Creator? That's because if you want to have multiple effects, you'll need to choose which you want to play. So, in my case, slide 1. With Lightform, you'll want to subtract one number from your actual slide number. So slide 1 is 0.0, .0 slide 2 is 1.0, and so on. We'll enter our device serial, which can be found inside Lightform Creator, then have it select slide 1 or 0.0. .0. The second trigger is to actually play the projection. To do this, create another applet using the same steps as before, but have our phrase be Play Mara. Our Then That Lightform Cloud trigger should then be set to Play Project. Just enter the serial and you're set. The last trigger you'll want to make is to stop the projection so that it doesn't play the others. To do this, create another applet using the same steps as before, but have our phrase be Stop Lightform. Our Then That Lightform Cloud trigger should then be set to Stop Project. And like last time, just enter the serial and you're done. Now you want to implement these triggers into your Alexa routine you've created. But you want to make sure they play in a certain order. So in my Mara routine here, I want to place the Set Slide Index first by adding an IFT trigger, selecting that Prep Mara command, and placing it at the top. You'll want to do the same with your Play and Stop triggers, just make sure your play trigger is after the slide index and that your stop is at the end of your entire routine. For reference, here's my full Amazon Echo routine for the Mara effect, including triggers for things like smart outlets and lights I didn't animate in Hue Pro. They're also timed out so that they end and begin around the same time as the audio. That is all the preliminary work. At this point, I now have triggers for my light show, video window, and Echo routine. This is where the final step comes in, and it's a big one. Tasker. Tasker is an app for your Android that lets you create extremely complex commands using apps and your phone's operating system in general. To use it, you'll need to enable certain permissions and switch your phone into developer mode, which the app helps you do when you first install it. It's worth noting that our Echo Routine trigger only exists inside the Alexa app for now, because as of this recording, no such widgets exist for them. Certain apps exist to create widgets to trigger them, but in my experience, they can be laggy and unreliable. So, in order to trigger our routine, we will also need a Tasker plugin called Auto Input, which effectively allows you to simulate screen taps on your phone without actually needing to click anything. You can find this in the Google Play Store. Our ultimate goal with Tasker is to create one long process that can trigger a sequence of multiple apps in just one button push. We'll name this task Mara. To start, we'll initiate our Alexa routine, which should cover our Lightform commands, as well as anything else you've added, like Smart Outlets. Create an action, select App, Launch App, and have Tasker open the Alexa app. Since the trigger can only be initiated from inside the Alexa app, we'll be using Auto Input here. Create another action, select Plugin, Auto Input, then Action. This will open the Action Edit menu. Click the pencil icon and Auto Input will open. Click Easy Setup. After that, you'll be given the option of selecting the screen your simulated tap will occur on. So open your Alexa app, go to the Routine screen, and then select Add from that Auto Input notification. After that, the next thing you touch is what Auto Input will click. So for us, it's this little play icon next to the routine. After you click the play button, select Accept from the Auto Input notification. It will then show your currently open apps, at which point you'll reopen Auto Input and confirm the selected element. I sometimes have issues with using the element text, so typically I will use the center point of where you touched instead, just to avoid confusion with the other buttons on the screen. Once selected, the action you want to go with is click. Then click the check mark. For this to work consistently, make sure anytime you close the Alexa app or before you try starting the effects, ensure this routines page is open. A quick pointer from me is to wait a second or so after your auto input function before you have the app close or for something else to happen. This just ensures it has enough time to perform the action. To do that, add an action, search, and click wait. 
and add one second. The next action is to have your phone change to the page you placed all your widgets on. So add another action, search and click Go Home, and select the page you'd like the app to send you to. In our case, our widgets are on the eighth page, so we put in page eight. This auto input feature can be applied to the Hue Pro and Rasp controller widgets as well, so perform the same actions for those. With auto input, choosing to select from that page and to click the coordinates for those widgets. Hue Pro widgets are pretty instantaneous, but for Rasp controller at least, clicking a widget opens the app to show the command line. So you'll need to add additional go home actions after one is clicked. Interestingly enough, Rasp controller actually appears as a plugin option where you can choose the commands you created directly, though I found it to be less reliable than auto input. For the sound, you can choose the file you created by adding an action for media, music play, and then selecting the file path. Also, in my case, both before and after an effect is running, I run a Spotify playlist in the background on my speaker. You can pause and control Spotify with media control commands and selecting Spotify. I have mine pause after the echo routine is triggered and then restart near the end of the action. At this point, it's just a matter of trial and error and figuring out the timing. Auto input should be able to trigger your echo routines, Hue Pro widgets, Rasp controller widgets, and your music. For example, here is the tasker command I've put together for the full Mara's Eye effect, which utilizes everything covered above, but with pauses throughout to make sure everything triggers at just the right time when you factor in lag. But how do we get it down to just one button push from the home screen? That's right, another widget. Add a tasker task shortcut widget to the same screen as your other widgets, then give it an icon at the bottom of the screen. And there you have it. With a little time and some preparation, you can control multiple systems at once to create a synchronized light, video, sound, and projection show, all in a single button push. I hope this was helpful to you, and if you know of any simplification techniques to this approach, feel free to share below. Until then, mahalo.